Well, good morning and welcome to another edition of What's Up with Dr. A. Nathan Young. I'm so excited to be joining you in your living room or your office or wherever you're watching us at. I want you to know that the word that is going to be spoken today is just for you. So tune in, listen up, grab a cup of coffee. Let's go on a ride and see what God has to say to us this morning. Meet me right back here in 26 minutes. What's up, Faith Bible Church? How y'all doing? To all of our first time guests and our television audience, welcome to Faith Bible Church. Let's give our first time guests and television audience a Amen, amen. Today is a special day, Faith Bible, because today is the day that we celebrate a huge milestone in the lives of some of our young people. And so if you are graduating either from high school or college, I wanna go ahead and invite you up to the stage at this point. Uh, you can come on up and as they are coming up, I'm gonna ask Faith Bible Church to give them a big, huge round of applause. High school and co college graduates, come on, you here. How you doing? Good. And this is our youth pastor, Jonathan. He's going to help us with this part of our service. And tell us your name, where you're graduating from, and where you're headed. My name is Letitia, and I graduated from Fountain Blue. And what's next? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jacob. I'm graduating from North Shore Tech, and I'm trying to work for Clico after I graduate. Amen. Amen. Give him my hand. Give him my hand. Amen. We have some gifts for you guys. Give me the gifts. And I'm going to ask the Pastor Jonathan just pray for him and just extend your hands this way toward our graduates. Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for your great faithfulness. We give you thanks for the blessings of opportunities you give us, but also the people to help guide us. We give you thanks for the, I give you thanks personally for the capabilities of these young people here. I give you thanks for the bond and the future that you have for them, the connections that you will enable them to make with others, and also the contributions that you will uh, demonstrate through them. I ask that you give them favor and that you bless them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Give them another hand, y'all. Amen. Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. Congrats, man. Congrats. Amen. I was sitting in my niece's graduation the other night, and I just remember thinking, that it seemed like yesterday that it was my time to graduate. And I remember thinking, uh, man, it's been 22 years since I graduated high school, but the time has gone so fast and it's happened so quickly. And young people, if I would say anything to you, I would say this, and that is, man, redeem the time because it goes very, very quickly. It happens very, very fast. And don't waste the time. The other thing that I would say to you is, I would say to you, you know, we spend our lives looking to get from one phase of life to the next phase of life. When you were in elementary school, you couldn't wait to get to middle school. When you were in middle school, oh, you just couldn't wait to get to junior high school. And when you were in junior high school, you just could not wait to get to high school. And now you're in high school and you can't wait to get to whatever's next. And I remember thinking, as I was graduating from high school, man, the day is finally here. I get to have freedom. I get to make my own decisions. I get to get away from my parents. Thank you, Jesus. And little did I know that at that point in my life, the last thing I needed was my own freedom. <laughs> and the very last thing I needed was to get away from my parents. And I think that somewhere along the way you realize that every phase of life is meant to prepare you for the next phase of life. You got to hear me on this. You're in the phase you're in, no matter what phase you're in. 
you're in that phase to prepare for the next phase. And the tragedy for a whole lot of people is that we don't spend time in the phase that we're in preparing for the next phase. We spend our time asking God, why am I in this phase? Why you won't open the door to the next phase? Why am I going through this? And why is this happening? And why is that happening? And I think many times the reason why God won't allow us to enter the next phase is because we hadn't spent enough time in what I call the desert of preparation. Listen to me, man. Take the time to prepare for the next phase. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your word. Bless now our time in your word. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to talk to the young people today. Y'all mind if I do that? Y'all mind if I do that? And if you're an old person or you consider yourself an old person, and the reason why I say it is because even when I'm 80, I'm going to be young. I'm going to be a young, I'm going to be a young 90-year-old. Amen. I'm going to be 110 years old. I'm young. Amen. Be doing what all the young folks do, boogalooing and everything. <laughs> I want to talk to the young people today, man, about uh, how to handle whatever phase of life that you're in and how to experience God's best for your life. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us. The reason why he says since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, when you get home, go back and read your Bible. Because in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, we've coined it the hall of faith. And the reason why we've coined it the hall of faith is because in that chapter of the Bible, it lays out, a whole bunch of people who demonstrated great faith in the Lord. It goes through all of the, um, a lot of, I should say, the people in the Old Testament who by their faith were considered righteous and justified, and they did some great acts of faith. And the Bible goes through this whole list of what they did to demonstrate this great faith. And then what he says is, therefore, in other words, based on what I've just told you, based on the fact that we have this great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. What cloud of witnesses? Those people who are of great faith, who have gone on to be with the Lord. He says, let us also, in other words, just like they did, let us also do some things. What do you want us to do? Let us also lay aside, first of all, every encumbrance. In another version of the Bible, you've got the KJV or the NKJV. It says, let us also lay aside every weight. All right. This version says, let us also, and I like this version, because it says, let us lay aside every encumbrance. What is an encumbrance? An encumbrance is anything that gets in the way. Anything that stands in the way. Now, notice most of the time when we think about laying aside every weight, when we think about something getting in our way of being who God wants us to be, the first thing our mind tends to migrate toward is a sin issue. But he's not talking about a sin issue right here. And the reason why we know he's not talking about a sin issue when he says, let us also lay aside every weight, is because he goes on to make the distinction. He says, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. In other words, what he's saying is there are encumbrances that are not necessarily sin. And there are encumbrances that stop us from becoming and being who God wants us to be and experiencing God's best for our lives. And they are not necessarily the sins that we tend to think about when we think about things that get in the way of us and our relationship with God. In other words, you have some stuff in your life that are an encumbrance to you becoming and being all that God wants you to be. And what he's saying is, you got to get rid of it. What is he saying? There's some good stuff in your life, some stuff that's not necessarily bad, some stuff that in, in and of itself 
isn't bad stuff. But the reason why it's bad for you is because it's stopping you from being the person or becoming who God wants you to be. It may not be bad for everybody else, but for you, it's a bad thing. And the reason why is because it's not allowing you to be your best. And what he says you got to do with it is he says you got to lay whatever that thing is, you got to lay it to the what? Notice he tells us to lay it to the side. He tells us to get it out the way. A lot of times when stuff is getting in our way, we blame everybody but us. This is in my way. I was going to do this, but that got in my way. I was going to do that, but this happened. I was going to do this, but this happened. Well, notice what he says. He says, you lay it what? You got to lay it aside. You got to get rid of it. What kind of stuff gets in our way? What kind of stuff becomes an encumbrance, Pastor, that's not necessarily bad? Well, it could be all kind of stuff. It could be, you know, it depends on what it is and what area in your life that you're not progressing. Watch this. For some of us, if it's in the area of improving ourselves, because I'm looking at a whole lot of folks. You've heard me say this before. I'm looking at a whole lot of people. You could have been finished that degree. Could have been gone back to school. Could have been got it done. I don't care who you are. I tell us all the time. I don't care who you are. You are only two years at most, two years away from your next degree. At the most, two years away. But you have encumbrances that keep getting in your way, things that you're allowing. And I hear people tell me, well, Pastor, I don't have time to go back to school. I got kids and I got this going on, I got that going on. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, but that's not all the way true. You know how I know it's not all the way true? Because you got TV. <laughs> you got internet. Whether you can't afford it or you don't have time, if you kill TV and the internet, guess what? You just freed up some money and some time to get it done. Ooh, pastor. You be asking too much of stuff. Here's a question you got to ask yourself. Is it worth it? He said, let us lay aside every word encumbrance. In other words, you got to get rid of whatever it is that's getting in the way of you becoming everything that God wants you to be. For others of us, it's finances. You, you got this one financial issue that's been hanging over your head, and you just refuse to take care of it. You just refuse to deal with it. And if you just go ahead and lay it aside, just go ahead and get rid of it, just go ahead and deal with it, just go ahead and, and, and do what you need to do to get done with it, and then your life will be a whole lot better off. For others of us, it's relationship. You, you're in a relationship right now that you know is not God's best for you. And no, if you're married, I am not talking to you. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. Your pastor is not giving you permission to divorce. Matter of fact, repeat after me. My pastor is not telling me to leave my spouse. Thank you for the disclaimer now that we got that out of the way. You know what happens? We get comfortable. Sometimes that's a hindrance, an encumbrance. Some of us, the encumbrance is comfort. We get comfortable where we are, whether it's our best or God's best for us or not, we get settled in. I mean, we know we could be doing a whole lot better. We know that life could be a whole lot better. We know that things could be a whole lot better. But hey, you know, I'm comfortable. I'm settled in. I've learned to live with where I am in life. And for you, comfort zone living is an encumbrance. To the point where it's stopping you from becoming all that God has for your life. Now watch this. The idea here is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is me giving up what's good in order to attain God's best for my life. And for so many of us, we don't want to give up what's good. Why? Because it's good. So good, Pastor. 
in order to attain God's best for our life. Raise your hand in here if you've gone through Financial Peace University. Wow, look at those hands. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Going through Financial Peace University. All right, put them down, put them down, put them down. Raise your hand in here if you thought it was easy. Not one? It was tough, right? No, I this. Raise your hand in here if it was worth it. Same hands going right back up. Listen, listen, listen. If you live your life avoiding sacrifice, if you live your life avoiding the tough stuff, if you live your life every day looking for what's comfortable for your life, your life will always be limited to where you are now. You have to make up in your mind that sacrifice is just a part of what I have to do in order for me to live the life that God wants me to live. Sacrifice is just what I have to do in order for me to really prosper like God wants me to prosper. And by the way, when I say prosper, I'm talking about way more than money. Amen. Because every time we hear prosper, we hear what? That's limited thinking. You got to get to the place where you realize that prospering is a whole lot more than money. Because I know a lo whole lot of people who got money and they miserable. And then I know a whole lot of people who, who don't have much money, but because they do it like God say do it, they got so much peace and joy and satisfaction and they're prospering. They just don't have the duckies. How much does your peace cost? How much does your joy cost? And too many times we hear the word prosper. Look, God got a whole lot more for you than a fat bank account. Because a fat bank account and you can't sleep at night, to me, you can keep the bank account. I like sleep. I like peace. I like joy. I like unity in my family. Amen. That's prospering to me. And if the money costs me all of those things, you can keep the money. Amen. I like Joyce and not on alimony. <laughs> <laughs> when I say prosper, I'm talking about a whole lot more than that. And for some of us, the reason why we don't prosper is because we refuse to sacrifice. We refuse to give up what's good to us. Pastor is so good to me. He be calling me, man. <laughs> you got to get to a place where it's not worth it. Where you're willing to sacrifice your good for God's best. Listen, listen, listen. Don't sacrifice what's best for what's good. Don't sacrifice what's best for what's what? Good. Listen, get in the habit, especially young people, listen, you got to get in the habit right now of choosing what's best over what's easy. Most of the times, what's best for you is not going to be what's easy for you. Come on, somebody. Also, lest I ever encumbrance and the sin, and the sin, and the sin, and the what? Sin. And the what? Sin. And the what? Sin. You got to get rid of the sin too, y'all. Amen. Because a lot of times we hold on to sin and want God to bless us in spite of it. And the thing that God's waiting for us to lay aside is the sin. We got all the other ducks lined up in the road. But we holding on to, oh, don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> holding on to the sin. God said you got to get rid of that too. Watch what he says and let us run with endurance the race that is set what? Before us, too, fixing our what? Right. Fixing our what? Right. That's focus. That's focus. You know what happens a lot of times to us? We lose focus. I I'm looking at some folks, and your life is made up of story after story where you would say, I was going to do this, but this happened. I was going to do that, but that happened. I was headed down this path, but then this happened. I never forget when CJ was a little boy, I was teaching him how to cut grass. And he was out there, like anybody who first started cutting grass, and he was just random with it. Just cutting all over the place. 
And he'll be out there for two or three hours sometimes and still miss. How you out there for that long and still miss grass? And uh, I got aggravated with him. And I'm instead of trying to teach him. And finally, I said, look, dude, this is what you do. I said, just follow the line of the last patch of grass you cut. I said, you go in a straight line and you follow the line between the grass that's not cut and the grass that is cut. I said, I don't care what you do. I just want you to go straight and stay on that what? Stay on that line. Sure enough, I came home one day after trying to teach him for about four or five months. I came home one day. He was about 10 years old. And I mean, the grass was cut and it was good, looking good and pretty the whole nine yards. And uh, I said, who cut the grass? I thought Joyce had hired somebody or something like that. I said, who cut the grass? He just said, I did that. I said, what'd you do? I just did what you told me. I just stayed on the line. He said, I just kept my eye on the what? Line. On the line. You know what happens to us in life a lot of times? We stop paying attention to the line. We get focused on what's going on in that yard. We get focused on what's going on in that yard. We start paying attention to how much we got to do. We start paying attention to how much grass it is. Start paying attention to how big the task is. And God says, what you got to learn to do is, you got to learn to just keep your eye on the line that's in front of you. And just keep going straight. And don't worry about how big the yard is. Don't worry about what's going on in their yard. Don't worry about what's going on in their yard. Don't worry about none of that. All I want, don't worry about what time it is. Or none. Just keep your eye on the line, on the assignment that I've given you right now. And if you will learn to just keep your eye on that line and keep walking, Keep going, no matter what, then you'll find that you'll accomplish a whole lot more. But so many times, what happens is we start focusing on all kinds of stuff. Satan sends us just the right distraction. And all of a sudden, where we were focused before, our mind is over there. Our mind is over there. A whole lot of us, we got off of our task because we worried about what's going on in somebody else's yard. Somebody else's business got you off of your business. You're no longer pursuing God's path for your life because somebody else got messed up. What's that got to do with you? Let me answer. Nothing. Keep your eye on what God told you to do. Well, stay in your lane, man. Stay in your lane. Do what God told you to do. Amen. Yeah, you got to stay focused. Never forget, me and Joyce went through Financial Peace University. It was sacrifice. It was focus. It was all of that. I love TV. Love watching television. I don't watch all that Real Housewives stuff. Real Housewives of this county and that parish and all that. I don't, I don't really like all that stuff. I like stuff like First 48. After the first 48, I like stuff, investigative shows, you know, who done it kind of shows. And uh, one time, like, Joyce looked at me and she said, why are you watching all these murder mystery shows? <laughs> she said, I'm watching you. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. I like mafia movies. Uh, yeah, I said, it. I like mafia movies. <laughs> Y'all watch worse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I like, I like that kind of stuff, and I love it. Well, we came to a point in, when we was doing Financial Peace University where two things that television was taken away from what we were trying to get done, and that is time that we could be giving toward improving our finances, and number two, money that we could be giving to the budget. And we made the decision to cut cable off. Wow. Talk about tough for me. That was tough. And there were times when I tried to talk Joyce Lynn to, uh, man, come on, let's just get it back. The Saints about to start. <laughs> she had to keep me focused. This is what we're trying to do, baby. Go by your daddy and your mama. <laughs> Watch the Saints game. Come on. Whatever you got to do, let's stay what? 
to stay focused. Can I tell you that I'm so glad we stayed focused? Because our lives are so much better off now. And I'm going to tell you something else. During the process, God taught me what I could live without. Because there are certain things that I didn't feel like I could live without that God taught me that I could. There are certain things that I felt like I couldn't go without, God taught me that I could. That only happens if you stay what? Last point. Come on, give me two again. Watch what happens. Notice this. Fixing our eyes on who? Jesus. The author and perfecter of faith, get this, who for the joy that was set where? Where was the joy? It was set before him. What did he do because of the joy that was set before him? He endured the what? Despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Watch this. Here was Jesus. He says, keep your eyes on him. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He says, who for the joy that was set where? Now look at Luke 9, 51. This is what it says. When the days were approaching for his ascension, he was determined to go to where? This was before he went to the cross. And the Bible says in the days before he was determined to get to Jerusalem. Well, what was in Jerusalem? Here's what was in Jerusalem. What was in Jerusalem was that's where he would be falsely accused. In Jerusalem is where he was going to be spit on. In Jerusalem is where he was going to be mocked. In Jerusalem is where he was going to have a crown of thorns placed on his head where a cat of nine tails would lash him in the back. In Jerusalem is where they would give him a cross after they tortured him to carry. In Jerusalem is where all of the bad things were going to happen to him. And yet the Bible says he was determined to get there. Why in the world is he determined to get there? To Jerusalem. Here's why. Go back to Hebrews 12 too. Here's why. It was because of the joy that was set where? Watch this. Jesus looked at all of the things that he had to go through. And then he looked at what would happen as a result of what he went through. And that's how he became determined to go through what he had to go through. His faith kicked in and said, you know what? If you're willing to go through this on the other side, it'll be worth it. Because while Jerusalem won't be any fun for you, On the other side of Jerusalem, you're going to emerge victorious. On the other side of Jerusalem, you're going to come out with all power. On the other side of Jerusalem, there is a harvest that's waiting for you that consists of the souls of many, many men, women, boys, girls, children, and all kinds of people whose lives will be delivered, transformed, set free, and get saved and have an eternity with God the Father because you were willing to go through Jerusalem. What's your Jerusalem? See, a lot of times we get fixated on the fact that we got to go through Jerusalem. And what God says is your faith got to kick in and you got to stop paying attention to Jerusalem and start paying attention to the joy that happens as a result of Jerusalem. Satan loves to get our mind focused on Jerusalem. And what God says is you got to follow your faith through Jerusalem. No, it's not easy. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it gets tough. All of that good stuff. But listen, listen, listen. Here's the deal. Don't forget about the joy. Don't forget about the reward. Don't forget what God is going to do in your life through your life and for your life as a result of the sacrifices, as a result of the hard times of the Jerusalems that he calls us to go through. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you once again for tuning in to What's Up with Dr. A. Nathan Young. I'm excited because as I see many of you in this regional area, you tell me how this program has been blessing your life. And I'm so thankful to God for that for the fact that we're meeting you right where you are. This program is possible only because people support it. And listen to me, 
We need ministry partners to partner with us in furthering this gospel message and getting it out to people so that we can bless other people just like it's blessed you. I wanna encourage you, partner with us. How do I partner, Pastor? You can partner with us for as little as 20 bucks a month and keeping this program going. You can go to myfaithbible.org, click on the giving tab and click TV ministry and become a ministry partner. Also, you can send in your partnership amount to 1148 North Columbia Street, Covington, Louisiana, 70433. Again, that's Faith Bible Church at 1148 North Columbia Street, Covington, Louisiana, 70433. Go ahead, become a ministry partner so that we can continue to impact lives and so that God will use what both you and I do to engage more people for the kingdom of Christ. God bless you. I'll see you right back here next week.